Thank you, Chairperson, for your kind introduction. Good morning, everyone. I must thank the organizers. organizers. This is a wonderful meeting, and thank you for inviting me for this uh, meeting. So I have been asked to discuss hypoglycemia on awareness, but most part of this talk has been already covered by Dr. Sa in the beginning. However, I'll just try to revise the, this thing. So we know everyone is aware that hypoglycemia is the greatest limiting factor in diabetes management. It can be as fatal as 6 to 10 percent of patients in type 1 diabetes mellitus. In insulin treated patients, prevalence of severe hypoglycemia is as high as 46 percent and 25 percent in type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes patients respectively. And the incidence rate is about 3.2 and 0.7 episodes per person per year in type 1 and type 2 diabetes respectively. It can alter the brain structure, it can damage the brain, it can alter the cognitive function and even sudden death. Since 1921, since the discovery of insulin, hypo is a major barrier in preventing the insulin from achieving its full therapeutic promise. Add more insulin, there is more hypoglycemia unawareness. So we know also all the potential complications. We need to know the complications and the effects of severe hypoglycemia. As the blood sugar drops down from 70 mg per dl, then there are certain changes in the ECG like abnormal prolonged cardiac depolarization like increased QTC and QT dysposition leading to various arrhythmias and sudden death. And there are also certain neuroglycopenic symptoms and signs like in the form of cognitive impairment, unusual behavior, seizure, coma and brain death. And you know about repeated episodes of severe hypoglycemic attacks. If there are severe and repeated attacks of hypoglycemia, there is a greater risk of dementia and the attributable risk of dementia with any hypoglycemia is about 2.3%. So the ADA has recommended in non-pregnant non adults with diabetes, the goal should be individualized based on the duration of the diabetes, age of the patient, life expectancy and associated comorbid conditions like CRF, CHF and liver failure, known CVT or advanced microvascular complications and presence of hypoglycemia and awareness and individual patient consideration. So all these things need to be taken care. So how do we define hypoglycemia? You know the AD and endosocyanate meat, they have already defined hypoglycemia as any drop in the blood sugar level less than or equal to 70 mg per dl with certain symptoms of neurogenic or neuroglycogenic symptoms in the early phase or in the late stage can be defined as hypoglycemia. It can be mild when it is self-treated but it can be called as severe when the patient requires assistance from the another individual to correct the hypoglycemia. So this is how we define the normal hypoglycemia, but there are certain situations like hypoglycemia and awareness, which is otherwise defined as is the reduced ability or failure to recognize hypoglycemia at the physiological plasma glucose concentration at which the warning symptoms that need to occur in a uh, typical patient of hypoglycemia that normally occurs doesn't happen. It is a ma major risk factor for severe hypoglycemia and these cases can lead to coma and death. The etiology of such situation are multi multifactorial. This could be due to chronic exposure to low blood glucose level or presence of antecedent hypoglycemia or recurrent severe hypoglycemia or failure of counter-regulatory hormones. The recurrent hypoglycemia, we call it recurrent when there are more than once attack of hypoglycemia which results in lifestyle disruption or further risk to health. Further classifying hypoglycemia, they can again divided into severe hypoglycemia that is again once again requiring the assistance of another person to correct the hypoglycemia and the documented blood sugar needs to be less than 45 milligram or equal to 45 milligram. Documented symptomatic hypoglycemia is less than 70 or more than sorry less than or equal to 70 with typical symptoms of hypoglycemia. Asymptomatic hypoglycemia patient without symptoms of hypoglycemia with blood sugar level less than or equal to 70. Probable symptomatic is symptoms but we presume that probably the blood sugar might be less than 70 or equal to 70 and pseudo hypoglycemia is symptoms but blood sugar is normal or that is more than 70 or equal to 70. So this is how we define different classes of hypoglycemia. Then what is the pathophysiology of hypoglycemia? So we know there are four tires like brain is the sensor organ and effector organs of the pancreas and the adrenal gland and hormones they are all secreted. Then finally the target organs that act. We know that the brain sensing organ, the hypothalamus is the main part 
where the where BMN that is ventromedial nucleus starts acting and the brain stem also when there is hypoglycemia the autonomic nervous system especially norepinephrine acetylcholine adrenaline all this they get activated the effector organ in the form of pancreas the alpha cells they get activated so glucagon also released and at the same time insulin levels they are the first suppressed the first reaction to any hypoglycemia is suppression of the insulin secretion that starts at level of 80 mg per TL. Then the next step is secretion of the epinephrine at the same time glucagon also secreted. And uh, ultimately the target organs like liver that is increasing the gluconeogenesis and increase in the glycogenesis causing increase in the glucose output. And second step is decrease in the glucose utilization by the peripheral organs like muscle or fat. So insulin suppression, the initial step that starts at 80 milligram, then at 65 to 68, the epinephrine gets secreted and glucagon as well. And if the blood glucose continues to fall, autonomic symptoms appear, then cognitive dysfunction starts to deteriorate around 54 milligram per DL. So you know about hypoglycemia, this is basically energy depletion state and the metabolic stress that leads to sympathetic activation. And in the presence of hypoglycemia awareness, we just can correct the situation. But when there is subsequent hypoglycemia or recurrent hypoglycemia, recurrent hypoglycemia, the situation is totally different. In subsequent hypoglycemia, what happens? There is less energy depletion, less metabolic stress, less susceptibility to cell death, less symptomatic activation. So there is a condition that is known as hypoglycemia unawareness or known as hypoglycemia associated autonomic failure. There is reduced adrenomedullary response. This is otherwise called as half. But when subsequent glycemia Glycemia, hypoglycemia is converted into recurrent hypoglycemia. In that case, the brain has a preconditioning situation that is cellular adaptation. The brain starts using the alternate fuels and altered glucose metabolism is there. So this is how the half is, uh, the pathophysiology of half occurs. This is a neurological condition affecting one's ability to perceive the autonomic features of low blood glucose level. This occurs due to recurrent hypoglycemic episodes. Adults with type 1 diabetes who have impaired awareness of hypoglycemia are much more likely to be exposed to asymptomatic hypoglycemia. There is risk of hypoglycemia is high in such individuals. So we need to take care of these patients. How the cerebral adaptation occurs in this situation that is mechanism half. In chronic hypoglycemia, what happens? There is overexpression of the GLUT1 and GLUT3, which are present in the microvessels of the blood brain, blood brain barrier and the neuron specific glucose transporters. And in frequent hypoglycemia, brain glucose uptake doesn't decrease during hypoglycemia. The brain is less neuroglycopenic than normal and doesn't need to doesn't generate the counter regulatory responses and the autonomic symptoms to defend and alert the subject about hypoglycemia. Neurological impairments after a hypoglycemic event, you know about the protective glucagon response that occurs to hypoglycemia is normal at diagnosis, begins to form within 1 to 2 years of duration in case of type 1 diabetes mellitus, but after 5 years, all these mechanisms, they are lost. So both mood and memory are impaired after a single episode of hypoglycemia and plasma blood glucose level, if it is less than 40 mg, the result in neuroglycopenia, which is associated with altered levels of consciousness, coma and death. And hypoglycemia induced dementia also can be seen in elderly patients. So the, you just look at this slide, it's a very interesting slide, how the cascade of events occurs during an episode of hypoglycemia. At 83 mg there is inhibition of the endogenous insulin suppression. When there is further decline, that is about at 30, 68 mg counter regulatory hormone release occurs, that is glucagon and adrenaline. Further decline, 50 to 58 onset of the symptoms occurs, that is neurogenic and neuroglycopenic. Then further decline, 43 to 54, neuroglycological dysfunction, that is you can demonstrate it by the evoked responses. Then at 54 there is widespread EEG changes. Then again after 50 mg, there is cognitive dysfunction, inability to perform the complex tracks and when the blood sugar reaches are less than 25, then there is severe neuroglycopenia leading to reduced levels of consciousness, convulsions and coma and again death. So because looking at these symptoms and signs, the patients actually rank fear of the severe hypoglycemia as high as fear of developing chronic complication. So they weigh chronic complication is equivalent to severe hypoglycemia. So that is the reason these patients that tend to reduce their insulin dose on their own for the fear of further hypoglycemia and hence there is a reduced patient adherence and leading to glycemic um, severe hyperglycemia or no control of the 
hypoglycemic, no control of blood sugar. So this is a slide that shows the relationship between the hypoglycemia rate and the A1C in the intensive treatment group arm. Higher the A1C, higher is the hypoglycemia events in the ACCARD study. And in the same study, it has been shown that in severe recurrent hypoglycemia, the mortality is higher in both intensive and standard treatment group. So it is a matter of recurrent and severe hypoglycemia. So both, both standard treatment group and intensive treatment group both had a higher mortality rate in the same study. The next slide, this is shown in the ACCARD study, same study. There is a significantly higher mortality in those experienced severe hypoglycemia compared to those who never experienced hypoglycemia. And this is another important study that was published recently in Diabetes 2014. They have already uh, demonstrated there is a frequent asymptomatic hypoglycemia that is associated with increased risk of arrhythmias in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. But most of the arrhythmias that occurred during nocturnal time, that was nighttime hypoglycemia. The kinds of arrhythmias were bradycardia, atrial ectopics, BPPs and complex BPPs. So probably the cause of death in case of nocturnal hypoglycemia is because of the arrhythmia. Then what is recurrent hypoglycemia and hypoglycemia awareness? So this entity we just came to know after the introduction of CGM study. So here is a case, 28 year old patient with a 15 year history, 15 year old history of type 1 diabetes mellitus who was put on CGMS and patient had hypoglycemia on awareness lasting from 9 o'clock to 10 p.m. The patient experienced a 2 hour episode of hypoglycemia on awareness while sleeping from 11.30 to 2 a.m. when he finally wake up because of the alarm and he corrected his hypoglycemia himself. So this has been defined as uh, in type 1, especially in type 1 diabetes patient, this uh, condition otherwise called as the dead in bed syndrome, mostly detected by the CGM. So we can take the corrective action. So normally what happens, hypoglycemic episodes, whenever they are nocturnal, they, are, they often go unrecognized. So this is an important study that was demonstrated in the CHICO study, both in type 1, type 2 diabetes mellitus patient. It was found that the 63% of the people with type 1 diabetes patient and 47% with type 2 diabetes had unrecognized hypoglycemia, which was specially detected by the CGM. So when corrective action was taken, patient was all, all right. And 70% of them were nocturnal. And the same study, not same, that another study that is over study, which was done in type 2 diabetes patients, 83% of the hypoglycemic episodes that detected by the CGM were not detected by the type 2 diabetes mellitus, and 54 of them were nocturnal. Uh, hypoglycemia on awareness is associated with 9 times higher rate of severe hypoglycemia as compared to the normal awareness. And sleep, this is a very interesting finding which we are not aware about it. So during sleep in a normal individual, even in children, in adult, this blunts the plasma adrenaline level in normal individuals and also blunts the catecholamine response to hypoglycemia. And same is also true for type 1 diabetes mellitus patients. When the type 1 patients, they go to sleep, there is also blunting of the plasma adrenaline level and there is also blunting of the catecholamine response to hypoglycemia. That is the reason why there is increased rise in the nocturnal hypoglycemia in iatrogenic hypoglycemia, especially those who are on insulin treatment. But when these patients they remain awake, they had a normal adrenaline secretion. Thus, this state of nocturnal hypoglycemia leading to death or coma, normally they are also often called as a transient state of additional half-life syndrome and characterized by hypoglycemia and awareness and an impaired adrenometronic response to hypoglycemia. So this is very important, we need to take care. Effect of one episode, other than this nitrate drop in the adrenaline, the effect of one episode of antecedent hypoglycemia on the physiological response. It is seen that after one episode of hypoglycemia, the adrenal level also reduced and also symptomatic response to hypoglycemia is also reduced. So this is how the counter regulatory response and the symptomatic responses are reduced after one episode of hypoglycemia. That is why we should avoid to have the second episode of recurrent hypoglycemia in any case of any patient taking insulin or having hydrogenic hypoglycemia. So what are the complications of hypoglycemic on awareness? You know this condition is a major risk factor. Is a major risk factor for severe hypoglycemia, long-term neurological manifestations in the form of motor uh, hemiparesis, sensory hemiparesis, choreoathetosis, epilepsy, brainstem syndrome, cognitive impairment, behavioral problem. Hmm? Finished? I can't get two minutes more? <laughs> Just one slide left. Okay, please proceed. But it's gone. Okay. Just two slides. 
epilepsy brainstem syndrome cognitive impairment and behavioral abnormalities automatism in type 1 younger type 1 diabetic patient they can have long term mental abnormalities and behavioral problems in the later in the life this patient can have cerebral edema which is a rare condition and needs to be treated in time otherwise they have a 100% mortality then what are the treatment and prevention strategies frequent smbg and avoid blood glucose values less than 65 review the associated comorbid conditions like presence of malabsorption renal failure liver disease adrenal insufficiency and hypothyroidism so any patient with hypoglycemia all these things needs to be ruled out the blunted counter regulatory response to hypoglycemia in women is mediated by estrogen so if any women having recurrent hypoglycemia you need not be surprised because estrogen has a role in having the uh, hypoglycemia on awareness use readily available sugar sir candy glucagon kits needs to be available for all type 1 diabetic patients because this is an emergency family members and colleagues and school all of them needs to be taught about the hypoglycemia even the emergency kits needs to be there in the school itself then avoid the a1c non diabetic range you start acting rapid acting insulin especially the analogs that will help you uh, in preventing the hypoglycemia and whole pancreas and islets and pancreas uh, pancreas no, no, islets transplantation has a role in the future so to sum up my talk until a cure for diabetes is found hypoglycemia will continue to be a major barrier to achieve long term glucose control and increase morbidity impaired awareness of hypoglycemia is a major limitation to achieve tight glycemic control the etiology of hypoglycemia on awareness is multifactorial diabetes patient with severe impaired awareness of hypoglycemia perform poorly they have a cognitive defect other neurological problems can be there scrupulous avoidance of hypoglycemia to restore hypo awareness and less intensive glycemic control are keys to prevent hypoglycemia readily available sugar tablets they needs to be there with all the patients candy or juice helps in patient in the emr whole pancreas and islet cell transplantation has a promising role in future thank you for your kind attention thank you